So here's how the numbers break down on this. 10% of what people hear, they remember. 20% of what they read, they remember. But 80% of what people see and hear, they're able to recall. So it provides a very compelling case for visual management. And it's absolutely crucial for organizations to, to leverage this, to say, wow, 80%. So if we're able to combine seeing and hearing of information, then we're really able to convey a message to people that they're able to uh, not only understand, because it was presented in a simpler format, like the picture's worth a, a thousand words, but also that their uh, recall of that message is multiples higher. So the case for visual management. Look, workloads continue to go up. It doesn't really matter what business you're in, someone's in today. The work requirements are going up, and the time to deal with those things is going down. And information flow is also becoming backbreaking. So there's ever more information coming at people through emails, through reports, through the internet, through all the different different means that exist. So it's, it's crucial that the information that we need people to understand and retain is communicated in, in a way that's, that provides the greatest chance of success for understanding and retention. And so, as we said, visual management really provides that, that way to ensure that the people are able to absorb that information. And we have a rapidly changing workplace environment. So we, we do things in different ways today than we did even five years ago, 10 years ago, largely driven by the microchip technology, computing, et cetera. And so it's, it's really important that, that along with that, we're upgrading the mental models by which we communicate information. So how do you use visual management? So it needs to communicate five things. So first, it needs to create your objectives and your goals. The second is, what are the key risks to that? And by risks, we mean both positives and negative. We mean both opportunities and threats that are related to the achievement of those objectives and goals. Once we understand that, so we understand, look, here's where we're going. Here's the key risks that we face in achieving that. The third thing is then your strategy. Here are the key initiatives and actions that we need to take to overcome those risks or maximize those risks, positive or negative, in order to ensure that we're able to successfully achieve those objectives and goals. The fourth thing is, what's the scorecard for all of that? How do we track performance against that? How do we know if we're on track or off track? And that's through the development and monitoring of your key performance indicators. And number five is, how are we actually performing? Is our status on track, off track? Are we red? Are we green? How, how are we actually doing in, in relation to all that. And based on actual performance, our performance is telling us, geez, do we have the right actions in place? Is it just a problem of we're not completing the actions we need to be, or is it a problem that the actions that we've identified aren't actually the right actions, and so on? Step five, providing the, the critical feedback information that actually then helps us go back to the first step and, and feeds into there to reevaluate that and go back through the five steps. So it's this ongoing cycle from goals to risks to strategy, KPIs and scorecards to actual performance, and then the loop continues. It's a, it's a never-ending loop, and, and fundamentally it follows the, the steps of, of a management system.